This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building a brand and growing your online business. More on them later. On Mega Projects, we've covered some pretty wacky ideas and the people who've promoted them. History teaches us again and again that almost any great undertaking in human history will be seen at some point as a bit of a crazy idea. Then there are other ideas we come across that are just so absolutely batshit crazy that you really have to wonder how anyone ever thought they would actually be feasible. These are the Mega Projects, only a month Mother could love. Yet these are often by far the most entertaining mega projects. The ones that are number one, impossible, impractical, number two, morally and ethically questionable, and number three, catastrophic in their potential consequences should they ever be tried. Adlantropa, also known as Pan Roper, is just such an idea. Not as ahead of its time, but completely bonkers from start to finish. We're going to get into the details of why the Atlantropa idea is completely insane and unachievable, but first, let's cover how the plan was conceived and what it would have entailed. First proposed by German architect Hermann Sorgel in the 1920s, who continued to promote the idea until he was hit by a car in 1952, the plan was as straightforward as it was bonkers. Scientists had only recently calculated that the volume of fresh water that entered the Mediterranean Sea was a mere one-third of the amount that was lost to evaporation each year, which had helped scientists to understand why it had a fairly high salinity, around 40% compared to the oceans at around 33%, even though it was continually fed by a number of freshwater rivers. Geologists and archaeologists were just learning about the fairly recently, in geological terms, Messian salinity crisis, which occurred between five and six million years ago when the Strait of Gibraltar blocked the flow of the Atlantic Ocean into the Mediterranean. This in turn caused the Mediterranean to dry up due to evaporation over about a thousand years, creating a vast inland salt flat that lay some five kilometers below sea level before again shifts in plate tectonics opened the strait again, filling the Mediterranean with water. Water. No analogous environment now exists on Earth, but imagine a desert twice as hot as the Mojave where inland salt lakes boil and bubble and nothing, not even algae, can live. And then suddenly, perhaps over the course of mere days, the whole thing is covered by the sea. And then it happens again, and again, and again. These cycles were discovered when scientists realized that large layers of hardened salt on the shores of the Mediterranean had formed in the recent geologic past. We now believe that this cycle of drying and flooding occurred a number of times, but each time it did, it massively altered the climate of Europe and indeed the entire world. In fact, we now believe that the procession of ice ages over the past several million years are all closely tied to the state of the Mediterranean, which seems to act as a sort of heat buffer for the Eurasian continent, keeping it warm in winter and absorbing heat in summer. These fascinating discoveries gave Sorgel a brilliant idea. To destroy it all by damming the Strait of Gibraltar, as well as the Messina and Sicily Trapani Straits, which separate Sicily from Italy and North Africa, as well as damming all major waterways that led to the Mediterranean. The idea was that this would generate enough electricity to power all of Europe's consumption at the time. Not only this, but the slow depletion of the Mediterranean would create vast swaths of now inhabitable and arable land where there had once only been useless, pointless salt water. I mean, what could be better? Under Sorgel's ambitious plan, the European continent would be joined with Africa through Italy to Tunisia and from Greece all the way to the Levant. This bizarre plan would have drastically enlarged the European continent while dividing the Mediterranean into two halves. It would have drained about 20% of the sea, lowering water levels in the western half by 100 meters and in the east by 200 meters. Even though 100 or 200 meters doesn't sound like a lot, this would have added about 570,000 kilometers of new land in the region, a land area about the size of the entire Iberian Peninsula. Sorgel apparently didn't think too hard about what this might do to the coastlines of countries like Italy, Spain, and Greece, which rely on shipping and fishing. But you know, never mind that. It was a big vision. With the Mediterranean blocked off, the geoengineering was just getting started. Runoff from the freshwater rivers of Europe would be directed via canals into an enormous system of new freshwater lakes in modern-day Libya, Chad, and Sudan, uniting Europe via canal to Lake Victoria and the Congo Basin, creating waterways all the way from Germany to East Africa and the Indian Ocean. 
Again, he seems not to have thought much about the people who already live in these regions, or indeed the local ecosystems. Some versions of this plan envisioned a massive inland sea dominating the former Sahara. These details were often brushed aside as things that could just be worked out a little bit later on. Now, just let me interrupt for a short word from today's video sponsor. If you ever wanted to start a website but have been put off by the thought of complicated coding, starting a website can be incredibly daunting, but no longer advanced coding degrees or a small fortune required to get started. Squarespace allows you to stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything product, content, and even your time. No coding required. Using their comprehensive list of modules, you can build your website and all you need to do is just drag and drop. And if you can't find a format that you want from the hundreds on offer, so it's unlikely, but you can create your own template module and save it for future use. Squarespace provides you with powerful analytics and insights into who visits your site and how they interact with your content. Squarespace's analytics tools include pages, traffic sources, audience geography, and much more. Figure out what is drawing your audience in and capitalize on the premium data that's provided to you. Stand out from the competition with Squarespace integrated email campaigns, convert email subscribers into loyal customers with the easy to use templates and automation features provided by Squarespace. You can also connect your social media profiles to your website and automatically push content from your website to your social media to guarantee all your followers are up to date. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash megaprojects, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now back to today's video. The insane plan would have completely reshaped the face of Europe and the world. It also would have exposed Africa to ruthless exploitation by the European empires of the time, who lusted after their oil and gas reserves. Sorgul saw this as an absolute win and a masterstroke of geoengineering that would solve all of humanity's problems, reuniting Africa and Europe into one new supercontinent. Africa, now able to be fed by canals from European rivers across the Mediterranean plain, could be green and colonized by Europeans. Now, if you're beginning to wonder about Sorgul's motives here, yes, these were the ideas of a devoted European colonist, a white supremacist, and almost certainly a Nazi. As it turns out, when Germans in the 1920s start sharing their theories about living space for German civilization, things won't necessarily turn out too well. His ideas weren't that far off from Hitler's own radical notions about Europe colonizing Russia. Though Sorgel was an avowed pacifist himself, his plan would have inevitably produced world-shaking violence and destruction for Africa. Sorgel's 1938 book, Die, Dry, Grossen, The Big Three, came with a quote from Hitler on its official dust jacket to demonstrate that the book was in line with Nazi ideology. Sorgel's plan was predicated on the notion that only white European civilization could bring peace and stability to the African continent, and that the best way to achieve this was to create a land bridge to Africa from which Europeans could begin to settle Saharan Africa. We're sure that the convenient fact that this would also place the oil fields of North Africa and the Levant in reach of European powers was an all too welcome coincidence. He further elaborated that the European mastery of hydrology and access to fresh water would achieve peaceful dominion for Europeans over all of Euro Africa, with free and plentiful hydroelectric power helping to usher in a new era of peace and prosperity. Although his racist ideas are certainly ludicrous in their assumptions about world peace, Sorgel's notions about climate did at least have a little basis in geological history, if only just. Europe and Saharan Africa have, over millions of years, flipped their climates between desertification and lush subtropical forested lands over and over. In a few hundred thousand or a million years, Africa may once again become a forest. And yet, Atlan Tropa would never have actually achieved this. Not only because Atlan Tropa would have been impossible to achieve, but also because if it had been, it would have resulted in at least a third world war and also destroyed the world's climate, probably actually killing off humanity. For one thing, the plans and documents Sorgul produced for its followers included a dam across the Gibraltar Strait that would have had to be 13 kilometers long and nearly a kilometer high. The Hoover Dam is just 200 meters high and nearly 400 meters long, so something five times higher and 30 times longer, or in other words, 600 times larger than the Hoover Dam, would have been necessary. 
even if there were enough cement and concrete or enough materials to make enough cement and concrete in the entire world which there wasn't this would have been something outside of the abilities of engineers at the time or for that matter today and that wasn't the only dam that the plan called for similar structures spanning from italy to tunis and from greece to turkey were also called for and that doesn't even begin to cover the thousands of kilometers of canals and hundreds of locks needed to achieve trans-mediterranean shipping channels all the way from the baltic and black sea to lake victoria Supposing even for a moment that Atlantropa could have been physically achieved, the consequences for the world climate would have been absolutely catastrophic. The new dry and salty desert sea lying some 5,000 meters below sea level would have reached temperatures up to 80 degrees Celsius, compared to the hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth of just 54 Celsius in Q8. This blasting heat would bake the land around it into a tough, dry wasteland where nothing would be likely to survive and it would only get worse. Even draining the Mediterranean by a few hundred meters would create devastating climate catastrophes, as fish populations that rely on freshwater mating grounds and underwater habitats would be decimated. Once the water was drained from much of the Mediterranean, there would be far less efficient heat exchange between Europe and the jet stream flow which carries heat north from the southern hemisphere, resulting in rapid desertification of the European plain and southern Europe from Albania and Greece in the south to Lithuania in the north, and all the way to Berlin from the Ural Mountains, turning them as dry as the Mojave Desert. The Mediterranean would exist as a sort of real-life Tatooine, whose low-lying dunes would trap hot air and broil everything around it. The land would be transformed from temperate seas and lovely beaches to a harsh, salty desert, more like Utah than the coast of modern Italy. Just in case that wasn't bad enough, the newly desiccated European continent would have its soil quickly washed away in giant continent-spanning mudslides as intense storms generated by the air currents around the outside of the enormous heat bubble would roil much of Europe and northern Africa, producing immense and continuous rainfall that would cover the land in mudslides. Yet these rains would evaporate quickly, leaving behind nothing but a baked dead landscape of lifeless sand. We know this partly because, as we mentioned before, this has already happened in geological history. When the plates have occasionally shifted to block the flow of the Mediterranean, Europe has turned into a wasteland desert hellscape as dry as the Sahara is today. To make matters worse still, the salt now lying on the parched plain of the Mediterranean would be kicked up into giant world-spanning salt storms, which would deposit salt and sand across millions of hectares of arable land, causing mass deaths of ecosystems and the destruction of farmland as far away as China. Yet more storms would then batter these deadened lands, leading to more landslides and more desertification. And just in case all of that was already bad enough, after intense desertification and the probable destruction of much of European and African life, this vast new desert, now incapable of sustaining life or moisture, would also become incapable of retaining any heat and might well cause a sudden global glacial event covering the Earth in ice. Again, we know this because this is what happened when it happened before. Deserts, though they're hot in the day, they become cold at night. A vast desert in place of a green and wet continent would reflect most sunlight back into space, causing any remaining moisture to freeze and sublime away. The continent would then be too dry and cold to melt the glaciers, which would quickly form from rainfall coming from the north, resulting in a feedback effect that could potentially cover the earth in ice. This exact scenario has occurred before, about two billion years ago, during the Great Oxygenation Catastrophe, when the Earth lacked plant life to combat the encroachment of ice sheets as the Earth cooled. In that case, it took nearly 300 million years for the Earth to warm up again. The Ice Age brought on by Atlantropa might not be that severe, but it could well end human civilization as we know it. Today, the only remaining adherents to Sorgal's ideas are those who argue that there remains a great deal of potential in using the Strait of Gibraltar as a source of energy for Europe and North Africa. Indeed, the flow of water into the Mediterranean through the Strait alone represents more potential energy than all sources of hydroelectric power in Europe combined. Modern proponents of damming the Strait call for a less dramatic approach, however, with more of a flexible barrier spread across the surface, connecting the two continents with a series of semi-permeable barriers which could be used to take advantage of the circular flow of water in and out of the Mediterranean. This plan, rather than changing the nature of the Mediterranean, depends on this constant flow to generate huge amounts of electrical power.